Today I'll show you how I made this fully poseable werewolf out of recycled materials for around $15. He can stand up, sit down, lay down, cross his legs, cross his arms, hold objects. It's been a real fun crazy build. Interested? Here we go! In order to make this as human or as real life-like as possible, every joint has what I call a swivel, which is this part, and a pivot. So there's a swivel and a pivot on the shoulder. It goes all the way up, it goes all the way down. This comes all the way up. It can go all the way around. Elbows are the same way, swivel and pivot. And I just measured what I can do and that's just reproduced it on the, these guys. So that's a swivel, a pivot right there. He's got a, a neck swivel or a pivot and a swivel. Here's the swivel, here's the pivot. So it allows for full motion, probably more than humanly possible. This is a number 10, three quarter inch long screw with a nylon nut. Well, this is a protein shake container. These are nut containers. These are orange juice containers. These are one liter bottles. These are two liter bottles. The arms are smaller, so they're the one liter bottles. And then I'll show you the legs later. Those are two liter bottles. This is part of my approach to recycle plastic, turn it into something of value. See? So he's got full range of motion. This is three quarter inch pipe insulation for the top of the shoulder blades. Now the one liter bottles, all I did is I took the ring off and then cut that down with a coping saw or hacksaw. It's pretty quick. I was cutting the bottom out of these things and I used it here, but I found you really don't need to do that. So here's one that I've actually cut off and then just cleaned out the inside of the circle. And this actually does have a hole in it, so I'll use that one up here. If you felt like that wasn't strong enough, you could certainly fill it up with shopping bags, those little cheap plastic bags. So I took this joint off here and I pushed this all the way up. Now I've got this void here. If you wanted to take this off, you could, and then you'd have a joint like this one here. But in this case, I want to show you an option where you're just stacking the bottles. So I've actually measured where I need to put this. I've made a black line, and then I actually cut the top back a little even further so that it will clear this position here. So now all I have to do is get a box cutter or sharp edge and trim along this line. You can use scissors if you want. Try to make it as straight as possible. This makes it easier to put together. And that's what the line does. All right, so now we just take this, push it up into here, adjust it a little bit and tape that up. Just some clear weather tape. It doesn't even have to be weather tape. Just thicker, clear stuff. And you have to be a little careful because it's very sticky. And so you just kind of get this guy going and then tape it around. Put that in place. Doesn't have to be perfect. It, this could be the clear shipping tape too. That works also. Now, when I'm working with this stuff, because it's so sticky, I just fold it over like this before I put it on. That way, if I need to come back in here and do some modifications, it's easy to take off. On this guy, I'm trying to emulate maybe a little thinner wrist. So I'm coming down here like this. You could certainly use this end. It would be fine. And you can see these are two different two liter bottles. You could certainly use these or all of these. I'm just trying to emulate the structure of the arms and legs. 
in combination to just kind of give it the best form. Sometimes you're lucky and they'll fit really nice telescoping like that and you just stretch them out and fit them. So other times it'll, there'll be a bit of a challenge, but I usually try to put the one on top on the outside and the one on the bottom on the inside. I have the arms down. Dimensions on the arms. The hands are fairly standard. You could just use your own arms or legs as a guide. I wanted him to be a little over six feet tall. He's a imposing werewolf and I'm gonna use this frame for all sorts of different other builds. So this distance here to here is 11 inches. This is 13 inches. These are both five inches on the top and the bottom. These are 18 inches. Again, it just depends on what proportions you want to do. And I'll post this all below because it's just a little <laughs> complicated to do it otherwise. You'll need to adjust this on occasion. So I've actually made a little access panel to horizontal cuts here and then a long cut there and that just allows me to open this guy up right there like that and access the various screws and then when I'm done I just tape it off let me go over the thoughts I have on this hand I wanted to make it so that it was articulated like a regular hand was but also so that it could grab something. So each one of these fingers, in theory, could grab something like a stick. Or whatever. I basically built one side of the mannequin or the werewolf. And you can see I have all this hot glue in there and if I had the time, I would probably rebuild this whole hand. That's all taped up. I actually had to make a window here to loosen up this screw. By the way, when I make... <laughs> Come back here, hand. I tried to find the center of the circle and then just put a little dot there, lined it up as best as I could for both sides, and then drilled the thickness of a number 10 screw and just put that in there like that. Make sure this guy is all set up right. And if for some reason you don't get this screw right here, you can just pivot it and adjust it. Or if for some reason it pops out, you just pivot and adjust it and you can go anywhere in the channel. You really do have a lot of flexibility. Once you've taken these off and on a couple times, they go pretty quick. And the way I've designed this is for some reason you got this guy wrong here you can just take it off and put it on the other way it's very flexible it's okay to have a little friction there because that helps it hold in place i found that you can really crank down on these and tighten them up pretty good and they'll still pivot the slider is a little more sensitive but the hinge it's just plastic on plastic so it works pretty solid Got a couple of threads showing on the other side of the nylon lock nut. That's when you know you have a good connection there and it's not going to back out. And you can see that I've actually put some black lines in here as reference points for when I reassemble. I'm going to get them back together and I'm going to show you a couple of little hints on the torso. Here's something I wanted to show you. This, this was kind of a challenge here, trying to get this connected to this. And so what I did is I drilled a hole in the center of this cap here and in the bottom of the bottle here, put washers on either side and then I used two cable ties to connect so that I could actually rotate that. I've never seen that anywhere before, probably came up with it, invented it here. That allows me to tighten that down all the way and then put this guy in place. I could certainly uh, tape this all off if need be and I might actually do that. Here is a couple more of these protein shake bottles that I've cut down and then just some duct tape to tape them in there, drilled holes. Here's the knees and the two liter bottles I was talking about and this is all just kind of trial and error. 
I actually cut these down to four inches. And this is 18 and a half and 18 and a half. And then I used, just cut up the, or the two liter bottles and you can see I stopped using the bottom of the bottles because it was just too hard to get the hole in there. So I just started using, you know, that's like two thirds of a bottle. And then these are two of those ends, but you could certainly use the tops of the bottle and do the same thing just to give it some structure. Now all I got to do is dress him up, mask him up, put the gloves on, the feet, and I think he's done. Had this guy up for a couple days, tried him out, and there was a couple things I wanted to fix. First of all, his pivot points, his elbows were too bony where the joint is. So I took a prime bubble envelope. These things are great material, and I'm trying to figure out all sorts of different ways to use them. Split it down the middle and then taped it up on either side for his elbows. If I haven't shown you the head, it's got the same kind of pivot on there, except for it spins a little bit. I cut down half inch end cap and it just fits perfectly, allows it to spin. If for some reason I want it to stay in a certain place, just take some duct tape, boom, put it down, and then you can slide the head that way. Continuing on the theme of trying to make this lightweight using recyclable, materials. I've got these Amazon Prime. And I'm just going to put it right there in place using the double-sided carpet tape. And I'm just going to build this guy up. So I got another one here. And then this guy goes here, here, and then a couple here. And maybe I'll build it up a little bit more, put a couple more of these guys up here just to make him look bigger and tougher. He's flashing a thumbs up because he's happy that he looks a little tougher now. Yeah, that was a good addition and the elbows look much better. So now it's a matter of just fixing his legs and his hips. So we're going to turn him around and that's what's going to happen next. So I wanted to give him some kneecaps so it wouldn't be pointy like this. This is what I came up with. I took 10 of these shopping bags, these lightweight shopping bags, and I taped them up and cut off the ends a little bit. And then I took some shot cord. I think this is eighth inch shot cord and stick that guy through here and then wrap them around like this square knot. So I've got it tied off and all I'm going to do is take an eight inch cable tie and Put it around this guy like this and just cinch it up real good. And that will be the back of the kneecap. You don't need one of these tools, but they all it comes in really handy. It, it's a tightener slash cutoff so that you don't have a sharp end. And now to keep that in place, I'm just going to take some black duct tape, you could use any color you want, and just tape it off like that to again make sure that that bungee stays right in place. But yet it's able to float, so when you move him around, he's not going to have that real sharp look. It's going to be softened. First of all, I really like this telescoping capability because it moves back and forth and it moves with the leg. Even when you fold his legs and things like that, you could see down in and see this that white space. In hindsight, I guess I could always paint that black or tape over it. But what I came up with is I'm using a pool noodle. I think it's an inch and a half long. Took some gaffer's tape. You could use electrical tape, duct tape instead of gaffer's tape. But I had gaffer's tape. It's not as shiny, so that's why I like it. Taped it all the way around here. Taped it on the inside. And then taped it over here just kind of to block the view of inside the shoe. And then just adjust this guy and put <laughs> legs on, bring him up, okay he's looking pretty good, we'll put his head on and take him outside and try a whole bunch of stuff out and see how well he works.
He's fully posable. He can stand up, sit down, lay down, cross his legs, cross his arms, hold objects. This guy can do almost anything. Thumbs up and comments always appreciated. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in these kinds of builds, Halloween, holidays, cosplay, costumes, props, making and breaking things, home repairs, designs of all kinds, check out my channel and please subscribe because you never know what you're gonna see.